recording soon and this is the second video that I'm sending in. Lisa emailed me. Um, I'm sorry it's taking me so long to get back to you. My internet's been down at my house and I just, I finally got on and I saw that you extended the deadline but I mean, I'll send it. I'm just happy that today's the 10th so I can get it in by the first deadline. Um, so, I'm Kathleen Cohen, I'm 17. And let's see, number two, describe your baby baby experience, tell us how long you've been babysitting. Okay. So, I was a mother's helper since fourth grade. I mean, okay, I'm a junior in high school now. And I've been a mother's helper since fourth grade. And then I, like, the mom's parent, I mean, the parent would come and take me home with them from school because I would babysit people's children who I went to school with. And, um... After 8th grade, so freshman and sophomore year, I kind of stopped babysitting. I stopped helping out just because I felt like I just wanted to work on my academics more. And then I got a job to pay by the government, which is where I'm going to today, which is, I work at Chewy, just like a Mexican uh, restaurant. And I realized I wanted to get back into babysitting just because of how how much more you get to be with kids. And I, I kind of just miss that. And be with parents. I love, <laughs> like, it's really weird, but I love meeting the parents and I love talking to the parents and talking to the moms especially because I like to see what happened in my life and then see what happened see how they raise their children just, just because it's I don't know just because I like to see how my life is different than theirs and it says how long have you been on Twitter City? Oh, I don't know I don't know how long I've been on Twitter City I think since for three months maybe I mean four or five months six months I don't know I honestly don't know I don't remember when I joined it might have been in the summer, so probably a while ago. It's been a while. I don't. I, I honestly cannot tell you the date when I started on Twitter City, but it's been a while, and that's why I've gotten all my babysitting jobs. Tell us why you love babysit. Okay. Uh, I like babysit because um, I just know that if I was a parent and I wanted to go out on a date with like my husband or if I wanted to go to a party, I would want someone that I can always trust and always have to call and someone that I'm like, oh, I'll call Catherine because I know she'll be there for me. And I just, I like to make the parents happy. I like to bring joy to the kids' life. I remember growing up, I had a babysitter. And every Thursday, he would come pick me up from school. He's older, he's like 31 now. And just every Thursday, I get, you know, Stuart's coming in. I call him Steve Stu. And I just know that for me growing up, I love babysitters. And I love, you know, because they got to go swimming with you. And they got to do all the, you know, play games and cards. And I just... That's why I like doing that thing. How would you describe your babysitting style? Um, my babysitting style would be pretty much making the child happy. You know, if he says, let's go play basketball, let's go jump on the trampoline, and I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's go jump on the trampoline. Like, and you know, it gives me a workout, it makes him happy, then he gives compliments about me to his parents, it makes the parents like me, and it's like a triangular effect, so like, it's just good. <laughs> Where are you, what are you great at as a babysitter? Um, I think it ties into question four, which is just making the person happy makes me happy, which I think that's what I'm best at, is just, I'm really open to doing anything. I like to, I, like, I'm just really easy going, so if the kid wants to do something, then I want to do it, so that's what I think I'm great at. What do you think you could be better at? Um, I haven't even looked at these questions yet, that's why I'm like... Um, I just wanted to see right off the top of my head. Um, I could be better at, I could be better at, you know, okay, I like having the house clean by the time the parent gets home, and so when we make a mess, the child and I, the children and I, um, I like to clean it up right after. That way, it's not much more of a hassle when everything's done, and the kids kind of are like, come on, come on, let's go play this, let's go play that, and it's just, and I'm always saying, like, no, let's clean up now, and then we'll go play this. And the kids sometimes get upset, you know, some kids like cry when they don't get what they want, and so you feel like, okay, one second, let me clean this up, and so I guess I could just clean it up after. I mean, I guess it's going to be better at least I'm silly, but number seven. What I'm trying to do and have it all on you. Help the mom in the situation, maybe save her sometime. Okay. Um, I've never babysat a mom who was, like, over, like, no, I have to make the lunch, I have to do this, I have to do that. I've never babysat someone, a family like that. 
Um, I mean, of course, I've helped out a mom in a situation uh, when she's had a hectic schedule, but that's what I consider babysitting. You know, she has to go to a parent. Like, I just went to the parent. They had a parent-teacher conference, and so I was there for only two hours or something. But, you know, just helping out. I've never had to do, I've never had a mom that's been so perfect. Um, I have one mom who's really, really, really overprotective, and she, you know, don't, don't be reading, don't be looking, which of course I wouldn't be, but it's, she, she looks you in the eye where it says like, okay, I'm leaving, make sure you watch my child, but I'm just thinking, of course I'm going to watch your child, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to let anything happen to him or her, but, but I do have a very, very overprotective mom, and the husband makes fun of her, so it, we just all laugh about it, and we make jokes about it, I try to make it funny and lighthearted, so. What do you think about the expectation of today's moms to be perfect? Well, well, I I didn't have a perfect mom growing up. I didn't really have a that great of a. My parents got divorced when I was two, so uh, today's expectations would be. My expectations still to this day as a high school student would be like I, I want the mom to come to parent teacher things. I want them to come to the mother daughter boutiques. I want. You know, my mom stopped making my lunch in, like, fourth grade. I know parent people, a majority of my class, their parents still make their lunch. And it's just like, really? Wow. Um, but expectations of a perfect mom would just be, you know, picking up the child when they can, always being there, spending the weekend with them. I mean, that's, that's what I think would be perfect, you know, having... Having a mom that you can talk to, that would be awesome. Just moms that you can talk to. Like, the child would grow up knowing that they can tell their mom things. That's, that's really important, I think. What do you think every child and parent needs to know? Well, kind of like I just said, <laughs> um, I think communication is what... I think if I were to tell a child and a parent something, not like, you know, a parent would know more than I would know way more wiser, but if I were to tell a parent something, it would be... Let your kids, like, grow up the way they want to grow up. Don't try and, you know, if they want long hair, let them go through their phase because then they'll get over it. See, you know, see it's not very, oh, I don't know. People can have long hair and still be clean cut and businessman. No offense to anyone that's watching this, but, um, I just, I know that my mom and I didn't really have good communication growing up, and so there are a lot of things that, well, right now my mom knows pretty much everything about me. Like, I mean, I'm sure I don't tell her, oh, I, you know, went out last night and met this really cute guy, but I mean, I'll tell her, like, oh, I really like this guy. I mean, I'll tell her the important things, but it's, I think it's communication that matters the most, is, like, letting, making sure your the parent and the child both know that they can talk to each other. Because that, that just, that is just important, I think. Um, this one is dancing, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, so <laughs> this says add in anything at the end of the video. Um, I'm just, I'm excited that you guys emailed, or Mrs. Capretto, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, I'm glad you guys got back to me, and I I don't know what's going on. I mean, I just got another email from Lisa saying that the deadline got moved to March 13th. Um, I don't like you be... I'm reading my emails. I'm sorry. That's so rude. <laughs> it's, it's from Lisa, though. Um, so, yeah. I just, that's all. I don't know if there's anything else you want to know about me. You can, of course, email me, and I'll try and, you know, fix my internet as fast as possible. Our whole house internet went down for a little bit, so that's why it took me so long to get back to you. But, uh, I hope you liked my video, and I hope you guys are having good applicants for this and everything works out well and just let me know what you think and I'm excited to get back from you. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.